I love how despite the effort that I took to make it look like my room is clean, the, the giant pile of clothes that I tried to push out of the frame is still in the frame. I feel like I feel like this just makes sense. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel after an eight to nine month hiatus that I took. So if you are a returning viewer who has watched my videos over the past few years, um, then you'll know that at the end of 2021, I ended up taking a break from YouTube. I honestly kind of needed that break. I had been pretty much doing YouTube and making videos since 2016. Um, I've taken a couple months off here and there, but I mean never like a full actual break from it where I like didn't even really think about it to be honest and I honestly really needed it. I think that I was just feeling super burnt out and um, I wasn't finding enjoyment in reading anymore. It was kind of just becoming a job which I feel like so many people say, you know, so many people are like, you know, this isn't just for fun, you know, when you start to do it like work and you start making money from it and you do all of these things then like it's not enjoyment anymore. It, it doesn't become something that's like a hobby anymore and like as as many times as you've heard it though, in some way it is kind of true because that's what was happening. And I honestly think that it had been happening over the course of the past year in 2021. It was just kind of like slowly over time I just wasn't really finding my groove anymore and I honestly just really really needed that break. So I ended up taking a break uh, back in November currently September, so clearly it was a long break. Recently I've been starting to think about YouTube again. You know, I've been watching a couple book videos on YouTube. I've been kind of getting back in that like wistful, hmm, wouldn't it be nice kind of mode, mood, whatever you want to call it. And I just wanted to, to try making another video again. Just just try it, see how it goes, see how I feel about it. So that's, that's what this is. <laughs> this is me trying to make a comeback, I guess you want to say, even though I'm not really trying for anything. I'm just, you know, taking it one video at a time and seeing how it goes. So if you haven't already guessed, this video is going to kind of be a bit of a vlog sort of thing. And I think I'm probably going to do this for the majority of my videos going forward, just because I'm not really feeling like the whole get ready and sit down and, you know, think up a plan for a video is really the style that I want to do anymore. You know, I kind of just want to like wing it. I, I really do. I just kind of want to wing it and see where the wind takes me. And recently I've just been really wanting to read and I don't know why or where this came from because over the course of the break that I took, the many, many months I have not been making videos, I read maybe less than 10 books. Suddenly I just have been really wanting to read and I don't know why. So I'm gonna take advantage of it while I can and I'm gonna try to start up my channel again. So the book that I wanna try to read for this vlog is going to be Book Lovers by Emily Henry. One, because I've been seeing it everywhere recently and I am a sucker for a rom-com, so I've been really wanting to read it. And two, because you guys wouldn't know this, but I actually read Emily Henry's other two books, Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation, while I was not making videos. During that eight to nine month break, I read them earlier this year, I wanna say like March or something, and I fucking loved them. I thought that they were so cute, they were so great, Rom-com, delightful, I loved it, so um, I have a feeling I'm gonna like this one too. I mean, it's, it's pretty much just inevitable at this point, you know? So that's what I'm going to be doing in this vlog slash video slash whatever you want to call this, just to kind of ease myself back into the world of making videos and doing all of this stuff. We're just gonna see how this goes. So I'm like already halfway through this. I 150% could have read this entire thing last night, and I forced myself not to because I needed to like have some kind of content for this video. So I'm like exactly halfway through. I got right to the midpoint and then I forced myself to stop. I was like, no, you will not read this entire thing tonight. You are better than that, even though I know I'm not. I love this book so much. The more that I read it, the more that I'm like, I fucking love Emily Henry. I love her books and I am always, always, always a sucker for like the broody sarcastic love interest who like also happens to be in the literary world you know like i just uh -huh. but i just really love nora and charlie's dynamic i think that they work so well together i think that they're like so similar while also being just slightly different enough in like their personalities and the things that they like and like their backgrounds and that, that, that it just works, it works. But they're so similar as well that like they seem like a perfect fit and it's, ah, 
I love it so much. If you guys are into rom-coms and haven't read this yet, highly recommend. It's great. And I also recommend Emily Henry's other books, Be Treat and People We Meet on Vacation. I loved those too. I just, I'm just a sucker for rom-coms. But specifically when it comes to Emily Henry's books, I love them because they all have something to do with books, if that makes sense. Like Beach Read was about two writers and then People We Meet on Vacation. I don't actually remember what either of the main characters did for a living. But then in this one, Nora, the main character, is a cutthroat literary agent. And then the love interest in this one, Charlie, is like this snarky, broody book editor. And so just being in like the, the publishing world in itself, I love it. I don't know what it is, but reading about people who like books makes me want to keep reading books. I'm back and I may or may not have changed my top four or five times today because it is so freaking hot outside in Florida. So we're gonna ignore that. But I did manage to finish Book Lovers. Out of the three books that she's written so far, I really do think that this one is my favorite. And I don't know if I have a specific reason for that. I don't know if I just liked Nora and Charlie a lot more than I liked the other two sets of main characters or if I liked the story more. I did realize by the end of it though that I totally forgot to mention anything about Libby and like Nora and Libby's relationship as sisters and sort of like the family story that you kind of get to know about as the story goes on. I'm really not sure if this is one of the reasons why I feel like I liked this book more than her other two but right when I got toward the end of the book I realized that the sort of like the romance that was happening in the book didn't feel like as much of the main plot as Nora's relationship with Liz Libby was. I keep wanting to call her the Lizzie, it was Libby. I feel like it wasn't as much of the main plot as her relationship with her family and Libby was, which I honestly really loved. Or at least if it wasn't like the main, main plot, they felt kind of like on equal playing grounds with one another where, you know, both of the stories were playing out at the same time. They both felt equally important. Um, but at certain points in time, I feel like Libby and Nora sister bonding relationship trip that they took in this story which then led to a romance that happened on the side did feel like the main part of the story while the romance felt like it was on the side so even though this is like definitely a rom-com story I really did kind of like that it was a little bit of a turn you know it wasn't only about the romance um, even though you guys know I love romance but I liked kind of like the change up that I saw in this one especially because I love stories about siblings. If you've been here for a while, you might remember that. Um, I love stories about siblings because I have my own siblings and I just find it super relatable. And I really liked the way that this one went and I liked the, the how it all ended up at the end, if that makes sense. But anyway, yeah, so I finished Book Lovers and I really, really loved it. Um, that, that's all I have to say at this point. That's pretty much it. I'm not sure if I should just go ahead and stop the video here or or wait for it because I did I did go to Barnes and Noble uh, the other day and I got another book that I'm really excited to read. I have seen it around on online on YouTube, Instagram, whatever for years because it's an ongoing series that is either ongoing or may or may not have just finished. Um, but I've been seeing it everywhere for years. I've never once thought about picking it up. You know, I was like, eh, I'll get to it if it sounds interesting at some point. And recently it has started to sound interesting. I don't know why. It just keeps popping up on my page, on my, on my whatever. And, um, and it sounds really good. So I went out and I got it and let me go grab it. Hang on. It's The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I really have no idea. Like when I say that this book was showing up on my Instagram like years ago when it was coming out, what, what year did this come out? It wasn't that long ago. It was like a couple years ago. Oh, it was only in 2020. Okay, yeah. So in 2020 when this came out, I was seeing everybody talk about it. Like it was all over my Instagram and everywhere. Um, and people were really loving it and raving about it. And I was just kind of like, eh. Eh, like I just wasn't interested and um and recently I don't know what it was I don't know if somebody specific started posting about it I don't know if I've just been randomly getting a lot of promotion for it um I don't know if a book in this series recently came out maybe that's why I've been getting a lot of of things related to this coming after me but I have and it's worked because I bought the book should I read this in this video you'll have to stay tuned to find out I don't know anything about this story the only thing that I know is um some girl inherits like a, a major fortune from a billionaire that she may or may not know and then something else happens but that, that's the only part of the premise that I know. I haven't read it. Um, I, I don't plan on, on reading the premise. I'm just going to kind of dive into it and see what this is. Uh, yeah and um, 
and we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm like really strangely interested in reading this all of a sudden. So I'm gonna take advantage of that and use that motivation <laughs> to actually to, to, to read it. So I'm only like 52 pages into this. I started reading this last night and I like it so far. I like it in the fact that there's like this big mystery as to like this girl just inherited billions of dollars in an entire estate from this very wealthy man that she never knew, like a total stranger to her. And the mystery is kind of like how and why and what is the reason, and I'm so confused. Um, I like that, I think that is really interesting. And I really hope that it like pays off in a really big way. Like we follow this mystery all the way to the end. Kind of like, um, oh my God, what was the one mystery series that I read? With the main character was named Stevie, she, um, the, the, the Box in the Woods? No, that's the new one. That's, that's the new one in the series. What is the series called? Oh my god, I'm blanking. I, I don't even know where it is on my shelf. I'm pretty sure I didn't get rid of it. But um, that series by Maureen Johnson, cannot remember what it's called for the life of me. But that one, it kind of reminds me of that. But I will say when I first started this, I wasn't really sure how to feel because I felt like the book was trying really hard to be like a movie or a TV show, if that makes sense. First couple of scenes were kind of like off to a rocky start for me, but once she ended up making it to the guy's mansion for them to read the will about the inheritance or whatever, that was when it started getting good. And we met like all four of the Hawthorne grandsons and like now the tables have turned and now things are gonna get interesting. That was good. The beginning, not so much, but this, the, the next 25 pages or whatever, pretty good. This isn't like spoiling anything. It basically says it in the premise on the back, but what I'm excited for is the one clause in this will for her to gain this inheritance from the stranger that she never knew is that she must move into the mansion that he owns that now he's given to her within three days and stay there for at least a year. And she, Avery, is like a, a very like mathematical, very tactician, sort of minded and so um, I have a feeling that like it says on the back the, the mansion is going to be full of secret passages riddles and codes I have a feeling that there's going to be like some sort of secret that he wants her to solve or something that's going to clue into like who he was to her and like how he knew her and I'm just really excited to figure that out what I'm not excited for though is for one of these boys to try to like seduce her um, because they want her money <laughs> like that's not not here for that so I'm hoping if that does happen that it doesn't. <laughs> but also, this is giving me major like, oh my god, were, did you guys ever read Wattpad stories when you were younger and like there was that one story that became a book that I reread a couple years ago, it's called like My Life with the Walter Boys or something. It's kind of giving me that vibes where like girl moves in to house with many many brothers, who will she choose? Like that kind of thing. This is giving me that kind of vibes and I'm just gonna say it. I'm here for it, so long as one of them doesn't try to do nefarious things, which I can definitely see already happening, so we'll see. This book, this is the kind of book that I could just sit and read and just the entire thing, just read the entire thing the whole day, not even notice that time was passing by. Like, that's how invested I am in this book right now. It is so good. This book is giving me major, truly devious vibes. I finally remembered what the name of the series was. I know earlier I could not remember for the life of me, but I got it. Major, truly, truly devious vibes. I love it so much. And I love it specifically also, well, I don't know. This part is kind of annoying me to be honest with you, but I hate and also love the fact that I don't know who to trust. Like Avery is just trying to do her best with what she's been given and she's trying to figure out why she was given this massive inheritance from this complete stranger and so is everybody else. But all of the Hawthorne brothers in the series, all of the people still living in the house, all of the people around her, like I don't know who to trust. Somebody is coming after her, like multiple things are going on, there's all of these mysteries and so many other things beyond just why did he give her this inheritance and it's like I don't know who to trust. I really don't. And it's driving me crazy because they're obviously setting up for one of the boys to be like a major main player, but then also one of the other boys is kind of like on the sidelines, like, but he's clearly going to have some role in this eventually because like, you know, it, because. And so part of me is like, I want to 
not believe the one boy that the book is leading you to believe because that's normally how books go, right? Like they make you trust the one character and then later on they're like, yes, psych, and it's completely wrong. Or he was like, you know, deceiving her the whole time or whatever. But yeah, I'm on chapter 55, page 227. Uh, things are ramping up. We're finally starting to solve some of this like riddle mystery kind of thing that we've been going on. We're finding secrets in the house, secrets that, you know, the great grandfather, whoever Hawthorne left um, in order to solve this mystery mystery, I don't know. Um, so we're like slowly getting somewhere, but it's driving me crazy that I don't know who to trust. And also I'm trying so hard not to fly through this entire book in one sitting. I'm trying so hard. It took all of me to set up my camera to talk about this book because I just want to finish this so badly. But also I don't just want to sit here and finish an entire book today. Like I want to do other things, but then I just get so distracted because this. So uh, we're gonna see whether this is all that I do today or if I actually decide to be somewhat productive within the rest of my life. But yeah, so far I'm really liking it and I can understand why so many other people liked it when it first came out. Uh, it definitely, definitely is holding my interest, very gripping, and I want to know what's gonna happen. So I finished this book a couple hours ago and I liked it for the most part. I think that if I were giving it out of a five star rating, I'd probably end up giving it four stars. I really, really liked the story from, you know, the beginning was off to a rocky start and then the middle was really, really, really good good and then the end it was kind of like a lackluster payout for the whole story like building up building up building up just to like leave it where it left it but then it, the story kept going and there was another twist that kind of was like a bigger cliffhanger so I liked that more but all in all I would say like a good four stars I really enjoyed the book I enjoyed like not knowing who was who and like who was behind what and uh, there was like there was a moment that there usually comes in one of these books where like you trust everybody and then at the very end somebody like betrays them or like somebody like backstabs or you find out oh plot twist it was him all along or whatever there was a moment like that but it was not who I was expecting so I will say that at least I did just buy the second book on Kindle so I'll probably end up filming a video about that book uh, right after this so you'll probably see me relatively soon talking about that so if you've read this series and you want to hear my thoughts on the rest of it you won't have to wait too long but yeah I just love books that are just like leading you on this scavenger hunt like a scavenger hunt a treasure hunt you're not knowing where you're gonna end up or what the plan was all along and I really really love books like that that's why I love Truly Devious so much you know it started off with this you know unsolvable murder mystery that like you, you had no idea what had happened why it was unsolvable like what went wrong back in the 30s to make it so that nobody found out what happened and um leading you through that journey that sort of scavenger hunt of trying to put together the pieces all the way through three books was great so i can't wait to see what is in store for the rest of the series though i did actually like that um that the main mystery of this story was kind of solved in this book or at least you think that it was like I definitely think that there could be something extra to it because there is a bit of a cliffhanger here that kind of like leaves you wanting more or leaves you like wondering is there more you know so definitely think that things can be built off of this mystery but like for the most part the main mystery in this story was for the most part solved the most part, which I did like. I liked having a bit of an ending so it wasn't so much like a three book long what the hell is happening kind of story. Even though it still is a three book long what the hell is kind of happening story because it's a trilogy but still. Is it longer than that? I know that the third book is called The Final Gambit so I just assumed final meant finale like it was done so I don't know I could be wrong but yeah if you guys have read this book or if you've read book lovers which I know I also read in this video uh, let me know down below your thoughts um, I can't wait to make it to the second book in this series and see what changes and what happens oh I almost forgot to mention love triangle ah oh, I'm here for it I love love triangles it's just one of those tropes that I know people are so tired of and people can't stand and I am still so in love with them I love a good love triangle they're so it's it ah I love it but anyway yeah I can't wait to start the next book and I will probably end up wrapping up this video now that way I can start the next book and then continue making a video on it but uh if you stuck around this long thank you guys so much for watching um and coming back to my channel if you're you know a returning subscriber if you're new here hi how are you like i said early on i know that i was gone for a while but i'm hoping to just kind of make these like casual chill sort of like 
just read books with me videos. Maybe sometime soon I'll go back to doing that where you kind of like plan out a topic and you make a video around it. But for now, I just kind of want to just like chill out and just read, you know? Like it's been so long since I've actually enjoyed books and enjoyed them enough to want to like continue to read them back to back to back, which is basically what's happening now. And I don't want to lose that momentum. So I'm not going to like pause what I'm doing just to try to make videos like I used to. So I think I'm just gonna try this this sort of video style, see how it goes, you know, take you along for the journey with me. It'll kind of be like a reading vlog-esque video, but not exactly. You guys can just see what I read on a day-to-day -day basis and be along for the journey with me. So if I end up reading a lot of books, you'll see a lot of videos. And if I kind of slack off a little bit, maybe you won't. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll upload in my own time and you know, you guys will just get to be here with me and if there's anything that has come out in the last eight months that I've been blissfully unaware of, please let me know because I'd love to start making a list of all of the things that I should buy. Anyway though, now that that's all out of the way, um, I'm super excited to make videos again and I hope you guys are going to enjoy being here on the ride with me. So, um, thank you so much for watching and I guess I'll, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye! <laughs>